Hey everybody, it's your pal Drew, and I'm back, and I am renewed, because whew, that Ms. Marvel, those chapters, they took a lot out of me. I was just like burnt out. I almost didn't want to do the last chapter, but I was like, ah, I gotta gut through this, I mean, because like 120 people saw the first one, and I thought, well, I can't leave them dangling, but uh, oof, I really went... Uh, full bore towards the end of that last video because I just wanted to be done. It's such, it's such a conflicted character. So many people bounced uh, that version of Ms. Marvel around that it's there's no point <laughs> anymore on that. But I am going to talk about something I know all about and that is Howard Chaikin. And I've been a fan of his forever. I, in that Nick Fury episode I did, it has uh, an issue entirely uh, pencil and inked by um, Howard Chaikin and written by Jim Starlin and it, it's just so it's so dynamic and it just grabs you by the throat and just you have to read his stuff now in all fairness I first saw his stuff on the first issue of Star Wars uh, which came out a few months prior to the movie's release uh, and Roy Thomas uh, managed to get the movie rights for like pennies on the dollar and because nobody Star Wars was an unproven property, and it was bringing back space opera, something that had kind of been uh, gone for, you know, since, I don't know, like the, the 40s or so, or maybe the 50s, but the 50s were real cheap ones. Um, anyway, uh, this book I happened to run into at a bookstore, like a real bookstore, not a Walden's, but it might have been something in a uh, shopping center, like just a... Uh, Oh, I can't think of what it's called. It was some, you know, uh, independently owned bookstore. And I saw in the uh, bargain bins, I hate to say it, I saw this, and I saw a whole bunch of those uh, Origin of Marvel Comics, uh, Stan Lee uh, books that, uh, gosh, it had several of them. They were marked on to like two bucks from, you know, six bucks or something like that. And uh, I saw this, and I was like, I've seen this guy's work before. Um... Also, unfortunately for Howard Chaikin, though, he got uh, he got the Star Wars job kind of really down to the wire because the movie hadn't been fully out yet. So, it, I mean, all the stills were there and not everything had been shot and completed yet. This was actually done a few months prior to the movie's release. And then you got, you know, the deadlines just came looming and last minute stuff with uh, mer not merchandising, but, uh, you know... Uh, just all the important stuff that was being filmed they, there, there was like a whole host of other artists that jumped in so from issue issues for six issues it, inconsistent it had uh steve lee aloha ink an issue and then last one i think last two maybe i think Jake did breakdowns for rick hoberg and somebody else and it's just a real mess but um anyway i'm getting away from that um so i sort of knew him from that that first issue um and then uh, I ran across this, and I'm like, wow. I was like, this is really cool. I, I thought, is this another movie I've never seen before? But nope, it's an original uh, science fiction novel, graphic novel. One of the earliest ones. This is 1978 um, or 79, I can't recall. But uh, there was also um, Eclipse, I think, had Saber oh, by McGregor and... Uh, Billy Graham, and then there was also uh, the father, I think, of the graphic novel was Will Eisner. Um, but, uh, so this came out it's oversized, it's like magazine size, pretty cool. And, uh, and there's a lot of praise for, like, from no less from uh, New York Times and George Lucas. Uh, so, that's great. And the, the name Empire, pure coincidence, because Empire Strike Back probably wasn't even in production at the time. I don't know. Maybe it was, but even so, I don't think someone of Samuel R. Delaney's uh, cred could uh, would possibly rip something like that off because uh, he uh, he's very accomplished. He's done tons and tons and tons of uh, science fiction uh, books, and he's uh, done some comics, and he's just he's got a whole host of awards in his uh, long career. Uh, so I picked this up for the heck of it. And uh, it's a f it's a very interesting read, and Chaikin's painting 
was so different. It was, uh, I've got to figure out how to get it. Okay, that's a better shot. Okay, so we're just sort of starting off. I think of it, that reminds me a little bit in the Guardians of the Galaxy where uh, High Evolutionary uh, hung his hat. But uh, that's just a dumb coincidence. And, uh, you know, so we're establishing the hell out of everything. And the dialogue is actually superimposed over the paint, which is probably the best. This is our, uh, our version of Luke Skywalker win. Um, and uh, I just, I like the grays here, the gray wash. Now, I'm trying to decide. I asked my friend Phil from the Art Institute of uh, Pittsburgh, uh, who I graduated with, I asked him if he thought this was gouache or if he thought this was acrylic or whatever. And, uh, I didn't get an answer back soon enough, but it's got to be one of those two. And, and those are the ones I like best, you know, because I, I got no patience for oil painting, you know, like sitting and watch it dry for a day. It's like watching paint dry, as they say. And uh, so we get some more characters coming in, and the colors are so curious. I like the highlight in the hair and some of the contours to make the characters pop out, but it's not unrealistic. I mean, when you go out and you might be at that angle, there will be, a, people will be able to see your shape if you're wearing lighter clothing. And if you wear, um, you know, black clothing at night, you might get hit by a car. Um, anyway, uh, this woman's trying to escape. I love the design on her outfit. He just kind of zigzag some ink around to give it this really i mean it, it's probably just white out or um <clears throat> i don't know what i don't care but it looks great um she gets stopped this uh woman with uh it's hard to explain it's really a long story um she gets uh, at crossfire she gets taken down and captive moving along it's a long story um the pace is very unusual, though. Um, it just turns out like she's the uh, the whole boss of the shooting match, and he's sort of like the new kid on the block trying to figure out what's going on. And uh, uh, but it, the way Chicken uh, shapes face is just so wonderful. I mean, uh, beautiful, beautiful stuff. And what's great too is he, you know, he's not restricted to like just night scenes. He's these people coming out of the sand. Uh, I mean. I know what you're thinking, you know, Tatooine and stuff like that. So I, I, I'm not 100% sure if uh, Delancey or De, what's his name? Yeah, sorry, Delaney. I'm getting my names mixed up. Um, if he didn't have this a little bit in mind with the first Star Wars movie. But I don't know. I don't know. He might have written it long before Star Wars came out. I'm jumping ahead. I, I'm really joking because it's massive. Um, my only complaint about this is it has hints of space opera, but a lot of it is stuff that graphic uh, comic books, uh, science fiction and comic books for the longest time had a hard time succeeding. Uh, it, it did well in the pulps in the uh, 30s and 40s, but um, a lot of a lot of sci-fi in comic books was very dry. It was very like you know, by the, the, instead of saying like, you know, holy cow, or look out, it'd be like by the blah, blah, blah of the blah, blah, blahs, you know, like some like, uh, I know Doctor Strange uses like the multiple moons of Melanor and such, but uh, uh, if you get too caught up in coming up with uh, different names for different things, then you could lose the reader. I mean, even though it's absurd that they would use some of the phrases or some of the words that we would use, uh, it's just something you need it as a storytelling device. So I'm just jumping ahead to show some more. Uh, great, great, great. I love that. There's just so much to love on this. And that. And this is all paint, everybody. No computer coloring. All paint. And I only say this because I know uh, there's probably a lot of viewers out there who only grew up with computer colored comics and that's cool it's just that this was this was like i don't know what this was like a high like you know like a a visual feast for the eyes it almost made you feel high because it was so otherworldly yet tangible at the same time be most because chicken has got all the tools uh, and he knows how to make the, the most out of even a simple panel and uh and that's what I love about it. So this is all paint, no touch-up. 
just print it for the, and also the printing is great too you know and uh I like the uh, deep shadows and the various shadows. It's not just that one tone of orange. And this is, I mean, God, I would love to do a painting graphic novel. But I'm not independently wealthy. <laughs> and neither was uh, Chaykin. It's just that he was uh, already fully formed at like 1975. And he just got better and better and better and faster. And uh, so these are, this is kind of like, you think of the movie Krull, which came out, I think, in 1984 with those funny little sp spinner blades or whatever uh these are uh this is that version of that uh, but presaging it and it's uh it's kind of like the lightsaber thing lightsaber thing but you don't have to be a jedi to handle these homing blades it just takes a little finesse so she's showing him and she's like we cut that out watch it you i'm fond of that ear i just soon keep it if you don't mind and uh, i love these like um, oh, what's that called? It starts with a C. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, cameos. I, I like the cameo. You know, that's what they call that effect. That's something you would see in a, uh, uh, in a in a piece of jewelry that you would open up and see a face, whether it's painted or a uh, family photo. Uh, so great stuff going on here. and But it is a tad dry. And it's really heavy on the science fiction so it's really this has really got to be your jam if you're uh, into it uh i read it a long time ago when i was a kid and i sort of understood it but um i'll read it again sometime but it's yeah, as you could tell it's heavy lifting i'm only i'm maybe not even two-thirds through this book now this is a trip this is some kind of glass uh artifact that was a symbol for a so that could be used as a weapon or something. I'm going around and around with this stuff, but uh, wow. That's just great stuff. Great designs, too. I wonder how much input uh, Delaney had in this, or if he just let Chaykin uh, run run amok. Because uh, either way, you know, you're going to get good results. Got that white going into the yellow. Nice effect. And uh, there we go. There we go. A Krullin. Oh, so good. This is beautiful. That that's this is probably my favorite page of the whole book. You know, he's giving that uh oh what do you call that? It's not lens flare, but like a refract refractive color. Refractive <laughs> reflect I'll say it one more time. Refracted light <laughs> off of the uh the uh, gold type emblem uh, adorning her leg. At least you got time to take a good look at it while I was fumbling with my words. This is great. To, look how I'm trying to figure out how he created this depth. Part of me thinks he might have done this on an overlay and done it darker because there's depth here it's just lighter i think it would be easier to do a foreground that was darker uh than possibly screwing this up with putting a uh acetate over it and uh this is another one that just knocks me off my ass that's just so perfect i mean it's cinematic already i mean it's almost like if they ever made a movie of it and if they have uh please tell me below in the comments uh i apologize if i don't know Another shot. Ah, right under the, the old guillotine trick. And here comes this real mess of a guy. They faced him before, and he lost an arm in this in the uh, ensuing battle. Got some nice splat going there. Just need a toothbrush for that. So there's an explosion, 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 and they go down into the water. I love this effect. And here's some uh, compressed air pills or whatever. Uh, you know, you just go with it. It's sci-fi, okay? But I like the little highlights on the bubble. It really works. And uh, that picture there, she looks like uh, the one uh, gal from, uh, uh, what's that name? Um, oh, shit, I can't think of it. Uh, Elastica. Yeah, yeah, she was the one who quit. Uh after about 10 years or so but that's who she reminds me of i'm sure in the comments below you could correct me i would like some comments below because uh hey you know i'm here at your disposal well 
this bad guy shows up yet again. It's like a final showdown. But our pal Win, he has mastered the honing blades, homing blades, gets the guy right in the neck. And I love this. It's like uh Rin ran after them. Oh no no no. Oh uh Akram's rigid armor held erect, a limp and silent form. I just love that idea. I love that idea. Maybe it's been done elsewhere since, but that's the first time I've known of it. Explosions, just all these. And I love, you know, it, some of it, it, it's got that advertising uh, pop art style to it, uh, but it's modernized. I mean, like from like the 50s going into the late 70s, but I think it still holds up uh just just real daring colors this is another sandstorm but i think it's on another planet I, like it's, it's a lot to read <clears throat> now here's another thing i love boy oh boy do i love that now this looks like he may have taken a, a uh, they have you know zip -a tone which is the black dot patterns excuse me <clears throat> which is the dark uh dark dot patterns that you put uh, for shading they also have white versions of that too where you can do white dots to create something in the background versus the foreground i think he used one that had lines on it to get that effect of the uh, screen and that just that's beautiful stuff it, it's just that chicken is just doing such extraordinary bold uh bold ideas when it comes to painting and uh mixing it with the design like making the color you know not just be the color but the storyline meld everything together well you know this empire crumbles finally and he gets back home and uh that's about it well this is really affordable on, uh, at, on ebay i mean you could try your local shop but i really this is super obscure in fact i think i bought this on ebay about 10 years ago uh anyway it's really good it's a heavy read if you're into hardcore sci-fi as far as uh, the the nuts and bolts and the incontr this <laughs> I'm talking just great today incontr forget it if you're into like the elaborate um, comics of uh, that are hard sci-fi get that well we're not done yet yeah. now okay that's not him that's uh, I think Earl Norm but it's the first issue oh, oh no it's not Ignore what I just said. It's the first issue of the Hulk number 21. It was the uh, black and white magazine for, for nine issues and it turned to a color book that was in the present. Uh, and the back up, back up was Howard Chaykin again, all in color for a crime. I love those gray tones. Well, and what's interesting is um, Howard Chicken created Dominic Fortune, and Dominic Fortune first appeared in uh, an Atlas book, uh, Atlas publications from a very brief time in 1975 or 74. I thought I had it right here, but I, apparently I do not. Oh, okay, here we go. This was, he was called the Scorpion at the time, and it lasted two issues before chip goodman panicked and decided to make them superheroes uh and completely changed the characters the origins they just kept the names and uh, howard shaken he he saw the writing on the wall the book they only published four months worth of books that's probably the most piss poor planning i've ever heard of in my knowledge of comics publishing and it, it's pretty extensive if i could be so modest um so uh, jake just took it over to uh marvel and made it his own dominic fortune he uh, appeared in some black and white magazines uh in the mid 70s and he gradually uh got more and more intention he ended up with a uh a issue of marvel premiere that came out one of the last issues a color book that terry austin inked and that was a really cool combination but here uh denny o'neill is doing the script and i'm wondering how they break up the labor if they just i think they do it marvel style i think he's like ah, i want to do this and you know and denny was an agreeable person and i love that when the plane's about to land uh and they go to New York, and uh, 
Dominic Fortune's real name is Davy Fortune. Of he's uh, Jewish, and he just put on that other name to be a, a swashbuckler, and uh, and Sabbath, who is his lover slash landlord slash uh, gal Friday. It's it's a complex relationship, but it's great. He goes, uh, but I adore watching you buckle swashes. You're so masculine when you're angry. I just love it. Very, very good stuff. I'd love to see the originals, but who knows if uh, he still has them or not. Th that's just really great storytelling there. Well, this one guy, his him, him and his wife are looking for their uh, teenage boy. He's been gone missing for two weeks, and they draw comic books. And this is 1937, around that time. Instead, he wastes his time making funny books when he could be going to art school. And he's like, uh, hey, any of you kids, you know where Jake Weltman is? You mean Lance Harker? That's the name he signs to the Purple Slasher. And, uh, Dom, have you looked at some of this stuff? Uh, the stories are bother you don't have to compare to this. I'm not staring at Simon Pure, you know what propaganda. I'll eat Charlie McCarthy's top hat. I had to tape that out because YouTube's algorithm, end of story. You know, it's 1937, that, that evil bastard with the mustache in Germany is starting up trouble. But for some reason, if you mention it or you post it on YouTube, uh, you get struck down for some reason. And it, even if you're not endorsing it. Okay. So, okay, back to this. Really, really great stuff. And I love, it seems almost random, this red stripe going along. It, it just adds, it's a, it's like a still life in a sense. It's like a moment frozen in time, but then he had this bombastic red behind. Uh, she goes, for shame, Don. Using a weapon, a purple slasher would never, t would have taken him out with his bare knuckles. Purple slasher is a dope. And uh, I love that stuff. Just the outline with a couple of colors. It's a train station. Okay. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And he gets on board. I love this. He's going to shoot uh, the couple's son, but he's waiting till the train comes by. So nobody will hear the shot, but... Dominic is on the train. He leaps off, makes a dramatic entrance, shoots a guy's hand. This, I love it. It's like he finished it up and he added a little bit of white there and a little bit of white there. It just, and it, it's so cool. It's so, it's like, it's like sculpted. I've used that term in the past, but uh, it, it just, it's almost like he was finished. He's like, nah, psh, 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 throw that down. And, uh, Love this page. Up, oh, I'll buy another one. These magazines have flimsy, uh, uh, very delicate spines, but that's okay. I wanted to show this off. A little superimposing that over the uh, early co comic books that are quite crude. Oh, the cops come. And, uh, kids like, ah, oh. It's a shame your artwork was ruined. Ah, that stuff wasn't so hot anyway. I decided that hero junk wasn't for me. Didn't express my soul. Let me show you what I've been working on. Slash your mouse, huh? I have this huge headache. Uh, I'll sue the Dominic, or should I call you Davy, or Slasher? So, great stuff. And and he and uh, O'Neill are just really hitting it off. And they're really making this character just tremendous fun. And, uh, in fact, the, the early, the, the beginning stories were pretty lackluster because they were trying to follow the TV formula. It's like if you, nowadays you have a lot of comic books where you just spend a whole comic book with two, with a superhero and his roommate just bullshitting the whole time when you're supposed to have some kind of action and you know so it's downgrading they used to say comic books were like the greatest thing because they didn't have a budget for special effects 
And I think going back to the the, the TV show, the, the fairly cheap TV show, it's a step down. It's like, why would you minimize comics like that? Uh, Ghoul of my dreams. And uh, now here it says Howard Chaykin, but every cover insists on calling him Howie Chaykin. I don't know what Lynn Graham has against him. So who did this front this piece? Oh, uh, Bob. Oh, Joe Jusco. I'll have to show this to him sometime. Uh, I just love the imposed little, uh, you know, the necklines that are stuck there. Not stuck there. They're imposed. That's great. And I really like that. Beads. Wall of beads. You could tell that um, Chaykin really has uh, a love for this era where advertising uh, and art collided uh, in a magnificent way. That's great, too. You know, like the Art Deco. Uh, there's these zombies. He says, I came prepared. Pure garlic, crucifix, no, holy water. <laughs> He's forgetting they're not vampires. <laughs> so, uh, he does what he has to. Well, he gets the big bad smashed against the wall, and he immediately discorporates. Underneath that decay, the stench of the grave. Boy, I love that stuff. Very, very creepy. So... She's just this dingbat who wants to get married and find somebody else instead. And doesn't know what the hell just happened. So, now for another Joe Jessica cover. Arr! He was just a kid when he did this stuff. And he's just only gotten better. Nice little ad for Moon Knight. That was an interesting thing in the early shooter years is they would have a one-page promo of their own book, but it wouldn't just be like, buy it now. They would come up with a little tagline uh, that was just like used once, and they would try something else next time. A tiny terror tumble. So it's a radio uh, play, and there's this girl going, One of my very, very favorites from the new movie I know you want to see. And you're like, uh, Hey. I'm going to get you. Nothing's going to stop me. Well, somebody better get that moment before he wrecks the show. Uh, can I return to your seat? I kind of think, I almost think this is a Orzakowski letter, but I don't know. Um, I should give you a can chance to recover, but that'd be dumb. we got to silence him permanently. Well, it turns out that little sunshine is actually a uh, uh, a dwarf, and she is she doesn't want things screwed up. She's got a good gig going on with. Uh, let me see. Let me see what they say here. Oh, I don't know. If he blows the whistle, actually, that was her ex-husband who would blow the whistle, and it would ruin her fortune as playing a kid star. So, and, you know, it goes right into the baby thing about hiring Dominic. And he goes, she goes, I'm so frightened. Hooray. Now, the, the printing had screwed up. We've seen this page already. There's going to be a lot of this stuff going on. And again, it's like, man, when he does that, just people walking over the other panels, it's just so catchy. I see, we're seeing pages reprinted again. I, I missed a couple pages where Dominic takes on her lover, and da -da 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 -da. I got one more. I don't have all the issues in front of me. I have a stack of magazines, and they're not as or as organized as my comics are. Um, this is one of the last issues, and what's really ridiculous is to save money. This, the, the, the Hulk story is all black. Is all black and white, and Dominic Fortune is in color. Color, it's just absurd. But I didn't care because you know, these stories were actually.
that area, in my opinion. Um, well, he has a, uh, there's a parody of a character called the Shadow, but he's called the Silhouette. So he, uh, part of the, what his income, Dominic Fortune does these commercials for milk on the radio. Before smashing the schemes of international terrorists, I always have a glass of Ferdley's milk, doesn't everyone? So you got Denny and Howard in. Uh, this guy grabs him. He goes, don't come along quiet like uh, you stinking Mick. Give me a reason to cram those potato-eating teeth on your throat. Mick? Me? Not unless St. Patrick is from Israel, chum. But since you're in no mood to discuss ethnic backgrounds, I have one thing to say. Oy vey. <laughs> Here comes that shadow guy. He goes, gaze into my flame red soul, scorching mind, mincing <laughs> gemstone wrongdoer. Ha ha ha. Feel your will weakening. Ha. Your power to resist is fleeing. Ha ha. You are unable to defend yourself. Ha, ha, ha. Am I? Maybe I better put it to the test. Nope. <laughs> he goes, uh, okay. Care to introduce yourself or before I continue disillusioning you? Men call me the silhouette scourge of the criminal class, and you are rotten assassin. And this telegram proves it. Uh, but it's not the case. He but he gives uh, the silhouette the boot. And he gets all, you know, gussied up in his uh, swashbuckling uh, togs. And he's like, I could swear you were the silhouette. He goes, sorry, you're mistaken. My name is Lamar Cansfield, and I'm hosting this shindig. Uh, and his assistant is Margot Payne, Lamar's constant companion and his only one who knows a secret. <laughs> Quiet, Margot, look. Everyone in the blimp's <laughs> arriving. And along comes Santa Claus and his assistants. But uh, Dominic and Sabbath smell a rat. Yeah, they love these faces. <laughs> I gotta get the okay. You've been warned. Goes the silhouette. As of you, Lamar. If I wasn't in a hurry, I'd tie you into a tiny little knot and send you to a Boy Scout troop. Wham. But since I am, he jumps and get on the dirigible where Santa is holding this guy for a lot of money. Some real spectacular action. I mean, Shaken has always been great at action. Uh, there we go. Some more greatness. And uh, the guy shot in inside a dirigible which was it's just stupid so everybody jumps but because of co because it's comic books uh dominic fortune and his fellow land on a, a lot full of christmas trees covered in snow and the other guy didn't make it so explodes how terrible i don't know in a way, it's beautiful. A bright light in the midnight sky. It's like a beacon of hope. Like a star of Bethlehem. What an extraordinary stupid remark. And to all a good night. Well, that covers uh, the Howard Chaikin painting uh, episode. I am going to go back to uh, more Dominic Fortune because uh, I do want to show the Scorpion book. There were two of them done by Chaikin. And then he went back over to Marvel and made Dominic Fortune. And uh, there... Uh, the Dominic Fortune books from Chaikin, good lord, they need a collection. Marvel really needs to get a collection of these books. There's also some other books, too, that Warren Chaikin, they're okay, like a Marvel team up where Chaikin was, uh, was Chaikin, where um, Dominic was an elderly man, and then there was a web of Spider Man where it continued from that. And that was pretty much it. I mean, they didn't really go ape shit. Oh, oh, wait, but in the 2000s. Uh, Chaikin returned to a four-issue Dominic Fortune miniseries, which was excellent. And I think there's enough for a you know, healthy trade paperback. So, uh, you know, get on the stick, Marvel. You're reprinting everything else. Uh, you might as well do it uh, if you want, unless you want Howard to get the copyright back, which would be fine. Um, 
so that's it and uh, i hope you've enjoyed this uh you know a little bit different but uh, i think art aficionados uh will really enjoy this episode and sorry i was uh tripping over my words i'm just uh i don't it's late <laughs> and uh i don't make much sense after a certain time of night well um anyway uh, i'm signing off and i just wanted to say remind each and every one of you watching this that uh this video is 35 minutes long and the fact uh, i am forever grateful to anybody who will watch my episodes because there's so much competition out there there's movies there's tv there's comics there's gaming and uh other a shitload of other youtube channels uh and you know you've you've decided you'd spend half an hour with me and listen to what i have to say and uh it it means the world to me and i can't uh, I say that every episode, and I mean it every episode. It's uh, it's a lot of fun, and uh, leave comments below, and please hit uh, like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and leave a whole bunch of comments down there. YouTube loves that stuff, you know. Got to gotta be a slave to the rhythm, <laughs> the algorithm that is. Uh, that's it, and uh, I'm done babbling. See ya. Bye.